So, hi, uh, I'm Yuichiro Takeishi from Sony Tokyo, and the title of my talk is uh, Printable Hydroponic Gardens Initial Explorations and Considerations. So, well, I guess you're all excited for the reception now, so, but please bear with me for one last talk. So, first, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. I lead a small team at uh, Sony's Computer Science Lab in Tokyo, and we're pursuing a concept that we call Habitable Bits. Uh, we're interested in the built environment. So. We want to add uh, new layers of plasticity and interactivity to the built environment and ultimately realize things like buildings that can be freely customized like Facebook profiles or cities that can be customized uh, collectively edited like Wikipedia. And as part of our agenda, we've been looking into digital fabrication and how it can help uh, us uh, achieve this goal. And so we started the project with the goal of establishing a 3D printing technology for gardens. So that's what I'll be talking about today. And so people will design their own gardens of whatever shape on their computing devices. And then the garden printer fabricates the gardens, uh, prints the landscape, and embeds seeds. And this session is about food, but uh, food wasn't really exactly what we had in our minds when we started the project. Uh, we were more inspired by the phenomenon of DIY or do-it-yourself uh, urbanism. Some people call it, uh, use them tactical urbanism. So it's a form of urban renovation, urban design, where citizens take the matter into their own hands to solve uh, problems in, in their neighborhoods by, the, by themselves instead of waiting for the city to uh, act on their behalf. And San Francisco is like the global capital of this type of movement. And about 10 years ago, a group of uh, designers slash activists, they uh, converted or Ill illegally converted a, a roadside parking lot into a park, and they called it Parklets. And that kind of set the whole movement into motion. And so it started out as an illegal activity, but um, now the city of San Francisco recognizes the importance of this potential of this kind of uh, citizen-led uh, urban renewal. And these activities are now so, uh, officially sanctioned through a program called Pavement to Parks. And over the years, the movement has grown uh, to other cities in the US and also abroad. And in the American exhibition for the 2012 uh, Venice Architecture Biennale, they showed a compilation of various examples of DIY urbanism projects, including like a park beds or guerrilla gardening and chair bombing, et cetera, that, uh, that took place across the United States. And the movement got a further boost last year when a group of architects from the UK that uh, work with local communities to engage in this, ki this kind of uh, bottom-up urban renovation, regeneration projects. They won the prestigious Turner Prize for their work. And a lot of DIY urbanism projects deal with creating gardens and farms, uh, you know, adding greenery to cities. And we think that by using digital fabrication technology, we can accelerate this kind of DIY garden making. So by reducing the associated technical hurdles and also um, uh, the amount of commitment that is necessary to participate in such projects. So we want to make DIY urbanism more accessible, kind of like how uh, you know, Twitter has made social activism more accessible to the public. And we think increased accessibility is, is, is imperative if we want to bring uh, DIY urbanism to cities like Tokyo, where I came from, which has a range of factors that uh, make it, uh, that have so far prevented the phenomenon from uh, really taking off uh, in the city. So that is the or original motivation behind the project. And I want to clarify one thing. In the title of our paper, there's a term called hydroponics. And some of you might have been wondering what that means, you know, what the hell is hydroponics? And hydroponics refers to a technique to grow plants without using soil. So instead of using soil, in hydroponics you grow plants using an industrial substrate like sponge or felt or a urethane foam. And so in our work, we're printing hydroponic gardens so we don't use soil. And there's a drawback to hydroponics. Uh, unlike soil, these industrial substrates, uh, like sponge, they don't contain any nutrients by themselves, so you have to add them externally. Uh, typically when you give water to a hydroponic garden, you first mix it with a liquid nutrient solution. So that increases the maintenance cost. But the technique itself is highly scalable and versatile, and it's widely used uh, in gardening and farming, agriculture. And it's especially useful when you want to create gardens with non-traditional form factors, like uh, these vertical uh, gardens that grow on building walls. And another thing I want to clarify about the title is that it says initial explorations and considerations. So initial. So. If you're expecting some like a groundbreaking research achievements, you're not going to see anything and you know, you're not in luck. You'll have to wait until next year. So what we've done so far is we've been trying to complete the initial step. We've been trying to find a suitable material that is easily 3D printable and also uh, functions as an effective hydroponic substrate. So it has to fulfill a list of criteria, including the ability to uh, absorb water, for example. 
And so from, from here, I would like to talk about some of the results of our initial investigations. And at first, we were interested in a single material solution. Uh, so the entire garden will be printed using a single material. That seemed like uh, the most elegant solution to us that will uh, make life easier for us down the road. But to be honest, we didn't really get far with the approach. Uh, the closest we got was with this yarn-based printing technique that is based on work by Hudson and uh, shown in uh, Kai 2014, so two, two years ago at the same, the same conference. So the printer will first fabricate the 3D landscape out of yarn and then plant seeds from above. So for the implementation, we took an open source uh, RepRap 3D printer that's about like uh, this big and uh, we hacked it. We installed two custom heads. One is a yarn printing head that is a straightforward replication of Hudson's technique from 2014. And the other is a seed planting head that actually uh, just drops seeds from above with the hope that the, uh, the rough texture of the yarn landscape will catch the seeds. And by using Hudson's technique, we can fabricate a felt-like landscape using yarn, like a layer by layer, by punching the yarn into a felt-like structure. And the seed planting head, uh, so it just drops uh, specified seed plant types of plant seeds in predetermined locations. And in the end, you get what looks like a chunk of yarn, but if you give water and light, eventually plants will sprout and grow. And one thing we need to clarify here is that at this stage, uh, we were just trying to figure out what kind of material works and what doesn't. And we didn't bother to design a fully automatic uh, polished pipeline, so to speak. So uh, meaning that between the yarn printing phase and the seed planting phase, we had to manually switch heads. So the process is not fully automatic. And ideally, we would have this like a single uh, printing head that uh, implements both functions simultaneously. But you know that uh, we didn't bother to pursue that level of polish at this stage. And in the end, we had some good fun with the yarn-based technique. You know, plant growth was very good, good which was uh, actually expected because felt is uh, uh, it's, it's a material that's already commonly used in hydroponic substrate. So it's used in many vertical gardens, for example. Uh, but there were several flaws with uh, the technique that we couldn't really solve. And the most important was the lack of scalability. So yarn-based printing, is this is really, really slow. And we couldn't find a way to speed up the process to acceptable levels. And typically, hydroponic gardens, they adopt a modular construction uh, for like, reasons such as ease of installation and also to make it easier for, uh, for example, to contain diseases and to deal with dead plants. So even if we target building sized installations, we don't necessarily need, need a building size printer, but we need a certain level of scalability and uh, the yarn based technique wasn't able to pr provide that. So we look for a less elegant uh, multi-material solution that involves a combination of materials. So, and after a string of failures, we settled on a technique where we print the landscape as an empty shell uh, using a material called Prolay, which is a mix of plastic and water-soluble polymer. So if you print an ob object using this material and expose it to water, the water-soluble parts dissolve and you get a porous structure with a modest level of uh, water absorption capability. And so we print the empty shell using the Prolay and fill it with another material uh, we use clay pellets here, but this is interchangeable, so a lot of inert or granular materials with high water absorption capabilities should, should do the trick. And when we plant seeds, we don't just like drop them from above that, like we did with the yarn-based printer, uh, but instead we extrude a mixture of seeds and uh, super-absorbent polymer. That's the material that you see in diapers, you know, the material that can absorb like hundreds of times their volume. And a detailed explanation can be found in the paper, but, uh, but the way it works is that so in order for the seeds to germinate, it needs water and moisture, and that is provided by the super absorbent polymer. And eventually the polymer gets washed away from the surface, but by that time the roots will have reached the internal fillings, which can then provide them with the water and structural support. And for the implementation, we again hacked the open source wrap wrap printer, and the outer shell is printed using just a standard FDM head, so there's no customizations there. And the only custom component is the seed planting head that extrudes the mixture of the seeds and the polymer. And again, we don't really have a polished pipeline. You know, we don't really bother to build that. And so there's manual labor involved in the process, but we achieved moderately good growth with reliable and scalable printing. So we're now moving on to uh, larger scale printing. We're hacking a printer that's about two meters tall and we designed a custom head that consolidates all functionalities into a single head, unlike the small scale experiments. So it offers a mostly automatic pipeline. And so this is my last slide. Uh, so ICI is, is not really a gardening community or a uh, urbanism community or an architecture community, at, at least primarily. So there might be limited interest in those aspects of our work, but I know the community has a strong interest in digital fabrication. 
And if you look at this work as purely as a digital fabrication research, I think it's still uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so lately in digital fabrication, there's a lot of interest in devising ways to print functional systems as opposed to static objects like uh, electronic devices or mechanical apparatuses or you know, like human organs. Those are biological systems. And in this work, we're trying to print ecological systems. And uh, it seems that that's an underexplored research direction compared to the fabrication of electronic or mechanical or biological systems. And so I just wanted to point out that this is a direction that can be taken much further. Like, for example, we already have a sizable knowledge about uh, what kind of environments are conducive to the survival of specific type of insects or animals and birds. So maybe we can print tailored environments uh, that will provide habitats for targeted creatures. So incorporate not just flora, but also fauna in the gardens. And so who knows, and someday you might be printing forests or even like nature itself. And so I invite you to join, join us in pursuing this direction. And thank you very much, and I'll be happy, happy to take any questions. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? While, um, um, OK, yeah, go for it, yeah. Um, Quick question: How do you keep the? How do you give the nutrition to the seeds? Uh, the you seeds, because you were talking about in mm. your first slides, you were talking yeah. about that. Mm. One of the problem is that mm. you have to manually add nutrition. Yeah, exactly. To the, yeah. 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 So the seeds. How, yeah. Yeah, the seeds themselves contain the, the nutrients that are necessary for this uh, germination. So uh, you know, before sprouting, you don't really need to add nutrients. But after the uh, after the seeds sprout, and eventually, like uh, uh, you'll start to need to add liquid nutrient solutions to the water, or otherwise it won't uh, get enough nutrients to grow. Like a, so you can still like a, uh, you know, grow plants to a certain level with only water, but it won't really you know, get much bigger than that. Yeah, but after, so. that, after that, you have to add more nutrients. Yeah, exactly. Add, yeah, you have to uh, mix the water that, that you give with the liquid nutrient solutions. So that's uh, pretty much the same with every like, hydroponic uh, gardens out there. And yeah, that, is, that does increase the cost somewhat. Uh, Lene Nielsen from IT University of mm. Copenhagen. Uh, I have a garden. Mm. I also knit. knit. Uh, why 3D printing? I mean, ah. there are knitting machines. They are quite big. You can knit whatever, and you can also uh, mm. form knitting in whatever form you want. So you can program the knitting machines. Ah. <laughs> uh, and when I buy seeds, yeah. I buy them mm. on strings of paper. Mm -hmm. So I don't buy seeds that you actually have to put mm -hmm. in the ground, but they are sewn, they are glued to mm -hmm. strings of paper mm -hmm. of many meters long. Mm -hmm. yeah. So have you considered other, most, maybe more uh, simple mm -hmm. methods uh, of simple. printing gardens? Yeah, well, um, yeah, with, the, with this project, we went for the like, uh, uh, utmost like, uh, freedom of form. Yeah, because one reason is that uh, we wanted to, like, uh, uh, when we consider dense cities like Tokyo, we have to be really creative about where we uh, plant gardens or where we put, put, uh, put greenery. So, uh, yeah, so, so it's not really like a, um, you know, practical to create a, like a even, you know, if you ever come to Tokyo, you'll understand that, you know, like a, even if you put something on the ground, people are going to get pissed off, right? You know, because there's, every piece of land is so precious, even if it's a beautiful, beautifully crafted garden. So. You have to like uh, put greenery in really exotic places with exotic uh, form factors, and that's why we try to go with uh, 3D printing. That uh, we thought that would, that is a technology that will give us the, the most freedom of form. And but yeah, yeah, we are, we admit that there are more like uh, easier ways to uh, you know create if the sole objective is to um, you know add greenery. There might be more simpler solutions. I have a question for you, uh, if there aren't. So I know that you've, you've envisioned your 3D printed gardens as, as something that could impact, for example, a city like Tokyo, where you say gardening skills are limited and people don't have time. But in, in the kind of very ambitious vision you have in the bigger scheme of things, how do you think, you know, very, very many keen gardeners, what they love about gardening is, is the labor that they put into it, the hard work to get the garden to be a garden. Mm. So do you think, you know, maybe in the future when we have these kinds of gardens, they will become, I don't know, the hackers will come and disrupt the 3D printed gardens and actually put soil in them and, and grow something else. So how do you think 
the culture gardening as you know the hard work that is rewarding mm -hmm. will go when this becomes you know common when you can buy your 3d printed garden and mm. just have it like that Ah, well, yeah. Is it going to be a war, gardening Yeah, war? I can easily see that happening. Like, hipsters are going, are going to claim that this is not authentic <laughs> and, you know, we have to work with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, th that is a valid point. Um, yeah, we're trying to reduce the, the amount of effort and the hurdles as much as possible. And so for people like uh, who really enjoy this this labor, that yeah, that's uh, there's, there's absolutely no problem with that. With that well, we want to you know, make the, the whole activity accessible to people who aren't that interested into this kind of activity in the first place. So. It's a little bit like people who like to sew their own clothes and people like to buy them already. All made. right, yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you very much and thanks to all our speakers for Thank today's session. <laughs>